Okay, welcome again. This is Aaron from Literacy and Math Ideas here to talk to you about Common Core Standard 3082. This is, a, this is the second standard out of the nine under um, the Operation and Algebraic Thinking for third grade. Now, this standard is extremely important. If your math students are to fully understand division, um, it is critical that they get this right. And that's why I'm here to explain this standard thoroughly. And uh, so let's take a look at it. Uh, it says, interpret whole number quotient of whole numbers. For example, interpret 56 divided by 8 as the number of objects in each share when 56 objects are partitioned equally into 8 shares. Or, as a number of shares when 56 objects are partitioned into equal shares of 8 objects each. Uh, then it goes on to give an example. For example, describe a context in which a number of shares or a number of groups can be expressed as 56 divided by 8. Now, let's dissect this standard so that you understand the standard. I uh, will always believe that in order to teach the standard, you must understand the standard. And, uh, you know, when I first read this standard, I thought to myself, this standard is very important because most educators and teachers uh, do not realize that there are actually two ways to approach the meaning of division. Uh, let's use the division problem in the standard, uh, 56 divided by 8, to explain these two approaches to the meaning of division. Uh, the first approach is right here in the standard. Now, I'm going to reword this portion just a bit because I think the wording, although accurate, uh, may be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to say, interpret 56 divided by 8 as the number of items in each group when 56 items are divided equally into 8 groups. Now, we know that 56 divided by 8 is 7. Um, in the first approach, the 7 here uh, represents the, quote, number of items in each group when 56 are divided equally into eight groups, unquote. Um, the first approach to the meaning of division answers this question. How many items are in each group when 56, which is also called the dividend, is divided into eight equal groups? The eight is also called the divisor. Uh, so now let's take a closer look. I have 56 items and I want to arrange them in eight equal groups. As a practical example, uh, using the same numbers, uh, if I have 56 cupcakes and I have eight friends coming over, uh, how many cupcakes do I give to each friend? The exercise of dividing 56 into eight equal groups is what is required here. And it goes back to the question I mentioned, which represents the, the, the first approach to the meaning of division. How many items are in each group when 56 uh, is divided into eight uh, equal groups? Here, I'm showing eight groups. The eight groups could be anything, eight friends, eight boxes, uh, eight bags. The point is, uh, we want to answer the question of how many items uh, will be in each group if 56 items are divided evenly amongst them. So if we start distributing one by one to each group, after the first round, eight items would have been dished out, one for each group. Uh, we do it again, and we're up to 16, uh, then 24, 32, 40, 48, and then 56. And we have to stop here because we've reached the number that we've started out with. Now, if you count the number of items in each group, we have seven. So that is the first approach to the meaning of, of, uh, of um, division. And that's how we know that 56 divided by 8 is 7. Now, this approach is simple. Um, it is easy to understand. And at the third grade level, division should probably be, probably be introduced using this approach. The understanding of division using this approach uh, to its meaning works very well when dealing with whole numbers. However, there is another approach to the meaning of division that, is, um, that should also be introduced. And this is the second half of the standard. So let's go back to the standard and take a look at the second half. Uh, as you can see here, it says, or interpret 56 divided by 8 as a number of shares when 56 objects are partitioned into uh, equal shares of 8 objects each. Now again, 
I'll just reword this just a bit uh, using synonymous words to make the understanding of the wording a bit easier. Um, interpret 56 divided by 8 as a, uh, as a number of groups when 56 items are divided uh, into equal groups of 8 items each. In the first approach to the meaning of division, we are concerned with the number of items in each group. However, in this approach uh, to the meaning of, of, of division, we're concerned with the number of groups where each group has eight items. This approach to the meaning of division answers this question. How many groups consisting of eight items do you have in the 56 items? Let's go ahead and answer this question. I'm starting out with 56 items. The items could be anything, uh, cupcakes, pens, anything. Uh, how many groups consisting of eight items can we form? There's one group consisting of eight items. Uh, there's the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. So we have seven groups with each group consisting of eight items. Um, in the first approach, we have eight groups consisting of, um, of seven items, whereas in this approach, we have seven groups consisting of eight items. But in both cases, we have a total of 56 items. So, when you see a division problem, uh, which question should you be asking yourself? Let's say you have 10 divided by 2. To understand the physical meaning of this, should you be asking... How many items are in each group when 10 is divided into two equal groups? Uh, that's the first approach. Or should you be asking how many groups, each consisting of two items, do you have out of the 10 items? In both cases, the answer is five. You either have two groups with five items in each group, or you have five groups with two items in each group. The underlying thought process you take is important and therefore in regards to the question, uh, of, 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 um, the question of, of what you should be asking yourself when you see a division problem boils down to the context surrounding the problem you're trying to actually solve. Let's say you and a friend walked into a bakery and there are 10 donuts uh, that you want to split between you two. You're going to calculate 10 divided by two and using the first approach because you want two groups of donuts and you want to know how many donuts will be in each group. One group for you and the other group for your friend. Uh, in a different context, let's say you walk into the bakery and there are, uh, there are 10 donuts and you want to package the donuts into groups of twos and you want to know how many groups you will end up with. The division problem as well as the answer are the same, but the underlying question and context are different. The second approach to the meaning of, of division um, works well in understanding uh, division of whole numbers, as you just saw, as well as, un as, well as understanding uh, division involving fractions. Learning and understanding the second approach is crucially important for this very reason, division of fractions. Now, recall I mentioned earlier that the first approach to the meaning of division works well with understanding uh, division involving whole numbers also. Uh, it is important to note, however, that this is where the first uh, approach alone um, you know, ends and, and the first approach becomes a little bit more abstract when dealing with fractions. This is where knowing as well as, uh, as, as understanding the second approach, which applies both to whole numbers as well as, as fractional division, becomes very useful. Uh, eventually, students will need to graduate to understanding, fully understanding division from the second approach. Now, the first approach is in fact uh, very important, but it depends on the context of the problem you're, you're, you're trying to solve. With all this in mind, we over here at Literacy and Math Ideas created a product called uh, Interpreting Quotients of Whole Numbers. Now this product is a set of task cards that can uh, be instantly and easily printed out for, from your computer uh, for use with your students. Now, as should any product that purports to um, cover Common Core Standard 3082, this product covers both approaches to the meaning of division as we just discussed. And I want to show you a few of the task cards so you can see for yourself. Uh, in this task card, 
The student is asked to provide two illustrations for the division problem that is shown below. Um, now, in this case, we see 6 divided by 2. Now, we know that 6 divided by 2 is 3. But to illustrate this, the first thing the student needs to do is jot down 6 items. Then, using the first approach, form two equal groups. As you can see, each group has 3 items. However, for the second illustration, we'll use the second approach. Again, the, first, the, the, the student needs to first jot down 6 items, then make groups each containing 2 items. As you can see, there are three groups. The objective of this problem is to, um, is to get students to understand the concept of the different approaches to the physical meaning of division. In this task card, the two approaches are put into action with a word problem. Each task card for this type of problem actually have a matching task card so that the distinction between the approaches can be made, shown to, and practiced by the student. So, the student has to write the division problem and illustrate the solution. Remember, illustrating the solution gives the student a mental picture of what the division actually means. So, here we have, Jenny wants to divide 20 pins into groups of 5. How many groups will she have? So, the division problem is 20 divided by 5. Now, to illustrate this, we need 20 pins, and we need to start... Uh, grouping them into groups of five. One, two, three, four, and five. That's one group. Here are the other groups, and each group has five pens. Counting up the groups, we see that there are four groups. Now, like I said, there's a matching task card in this product that shows uh, or conveys the other approach. Here's the word problem in the very next task card. Jenny wants to divide 20 pens equally between 5 people. How many pens will each person get? Again, the division problem is the same, 20 divided by 5. However, uh, the grouping is different and the illustration should show this. Um, we can start with 5 groups since there are 5 people. If you distribute the pens equally between 5 groups, then each group or each person gets 4 pens. Okay. Now, these are just two problem types that are included in, these, uh, in, in this product. However, there are, there are two additional problem types that are also included in the product. And in all, there are 44 task cards um, complete with the answer key as well as an easy full storage box. Um, the product is available for instant download through Teachers Pay Teachers. And, and these task cards are sure to reinforce and teach the concept in Common Core Standard 3082. Um, you can use these, uh, these task cards as homework, uh, short quizzes, or uh, small in-class group discussions. Uh, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, and visit our blog. Thank you.